Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to Mac Break Studio. I'm your host, Brian Gary, and I'm joined once again, Steve Martin. Hi, Brian. Guru of Final Cut Pro. You're looking mighty dapper in that suit. I'm feeling pretty dapper today. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Just uh, finished a great uh, show at Macworld, two nice. days of Final Cut. Nice. So I'm going to uh, show you some of the things I showed them. I see Final Cut is up. It is up. So we're going to stay in Final Cut for this. We're going to be in Final Cut. In no fact, round tripping, no going out to 10 different apps? No, nope. we're going to stay entirely inside the universe of Final Cut Pro. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, because in this instance, we want to do a simple animation, some, something like the um, opening of the show 24, where you have multiple images kind of moving around. Um, that can all be done in Final Cut Pro um, since version one. And uh, for simple things like this, you don't necessarily need to go to motion if you could do it right here. Okay. Why, ta why take the trip if you don't need to take the trip? That's right. That's very green of you. Yes. We're actually going to stay yes. in one place. Okay. Yeah, in fact, I've, I've titled this episode Final Cut Pro's Wacky Coordinate System. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's take a look at what we got here. Here you can see I have a, a four video layer stack on the timeline. And we're going to essentially animate each of these to go up in their respective corners. One layer going up the upper left, the other layer going up the right, lower, lower left, lower right, and so on. Before I do that, notice how all my layers are kind of different durations. Right. Uh, I want to make them all the same duration. This is a great little trick. And um, if you hold down the command key and then click on the ends of the clip like this, and then press the, the E key for extend. Right. Actually, in this case, we're I'm extend, extending you're, back. You're extending back, <laughs> yes. Uh, notice what it does is it makes all oh. the layers match. Nice, that's, e that's even faster than the double blade. Yes, yeah. it is. It's much faster than double blade. So, notice all my layers are even now. Now let's um, start animating these. Now, in order to do this, mm -hmm. uh, most Final Cut Pro editors will tell you you need to double click the clip to load it into the viewer. So I'm going to start with the top layer, the V4, open it up, and click the uh, motion tab. Now, I, if you look in the canvas, I already have wireframe turned on. Right. I, could, I, could I could scale this down and move it around, but it's not precise. Right. It's, it's more loosey-goosey. It's not scientific. Right, you're eyeballing it at that point. Yeah, I'm eyeballing it. Yes, um, and I don't want to do that. I want to be precise. Okay. But before I do that, <laughs> um, show you how to be precise, I need to show you how Final Cut Pro deals with its coordinates. In other words, you're going to enter numbers, so right. it's helpful to know okay. what numbers you're entering and right. why, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is open the this little graphic I created in Photoshop so you can see. I'm calling it Final Cut Pro's Wacky Coordinate System. Um, as you can see here, you have the x-axis right. along, along this way, the horizontal, and you have the y-axis. But you need to understand that <laughs> number-wise, if you're putting in coordinates, x-axis will be a negative number going, if you look at the center point, zero, everything will be negative going mm -hmm. to the left of zero, okay? And everything will be in a positive going to the right of zero on the x-axis. What it gets real wacky and weird is the, the vertical, the y, mm -hmm. because Final Cut Pro defies every other, you know, algebraic system in, in, known in the history of mankind. Right. Uh, so, so, like, for example, like, up. y is going up. Right. The, the negative number is up. And really, like, if you look at After Effects and um, I believe even motion, the, the coordinates are or above zero are positive numbers. And does this matter if it's, uh, the, it's regardless of frame size, right? So whether I have an SD frame size it or HD, matter. it doesn't matter. There it is, the wacky okay. coordinate system. Got it. Okay, we, we got it? All right, good. So I needed to set the, st set the stage, as it were, uh, to now show you how you're gonna animate these. So I'm gonna open up this top layer, go to the motion tab, and what we're gonna actually do is animate well, we're going to set the anchor point. Right now, you notice if I scale this, notice it scales around the anchor point, which right. is dead center. Right. I don't want it scaling dead center. I want it scaled. In this case, let's say I want this first layer to scale from the upper left, right. which means I need to move the anchor point to the upper left. So I'm going to have to put the coordinates in for the anchor point. Okay. So which begs the question, where where do I get those numbers? Right. Right. So an easy way to do this is you just open the description. A distort property, and you can actually see the numbers, how they're broken down. Okay. Now, notice it says, uh, th notice you have two sets of numbers, th uh, 360 and 240. Mm -hmm. Well, this frame happens to be 720 by 480. Right. So, you think about it, it's just half, half the dimensions on the width and the, the height and the width. Because regardless, it's always going from the center. It's always going, uh, oh, exactly. Okay. So, for example, it, this is like a cheat sheet. So, in order to scale that clip on the upper left, notice it's minus 
360 minus 240 is what you'd want to enter in the anchor point. So I'm going to put in minus 360 tab minus 240. Now, why is that? It tells you that. Remember I said the wacky coordinate system, it's be minus left, minus up. Right. So it's up in the corner, right? So now when I scale this, no, notice how it scales. Ah, oh, perfectly right there. Perfectly down. scales under the corner. Right. See that? And this is true, like you said, it could be HD source material, SD source material. Those numbers will Those change. numbers and the distort uh, property will always tell you what your coordinates are. It comes with its own cheat sheet. It's a cheat sheet, exactly, exactly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and animate a couple of these really quick just so you can see how it works. So I'm gonna start at the beginning and notice I already have my anchor point. I'm gonna set a keyframe right at the first and then let's say I want this to happen over a second. Hold down the shift key, tap the right arrow to move the playhead a second and I'm just gonna set the scale for what? What do you guess? 50? Sure. 50. Now, as you can see here, that scales perfectly from the beginning to 50% over time. See that? Pretty nice, nice, huh? Very nice. And it's exactly where you want it's it. It's exactly. Let's go ahead and do the next layer. So in order to do that, you got to select the next layer, double click on it. Now you're going to have to enter the coordinates again. If you can't remember, just open the distort. And I want this one to go in the upper right. Right. So what do I do? I look down here, upper right. Oh, 360, positive 360, minus 240. So go 360, tab, minus 240. Okay. Now, I'm already at that one keyframe point, so I could probably set a keyframe here already since I'm already at that one second in. Right. I'll set this for 50%, and I'll go back to the home by going uh, Shift-I and setting a keyframe here at 100. See? So now what we have, look, so we got two layers now. You can see what's happening. The, the two layers are perfectly scaling right. from full screen up to the respective corners. Because that's the, the challenge a lot of times is you, 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 if you don't know the math, you're forced to do it in the canvas and it really is oh, yeah. you know, by hand. No, I can, I can tell you right now, those of you out there watching right now are falling out of your chairs. You're like, why was I wasting so much time you know, dragging this stuff around? Now you can do it mathematically. If, if I had a chair here, I would have already fallen out of it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, before I called it the swag method, which was um, scientific wild ass guess. Nice. Yeah, so now it's, there's no more guessing. Now it's the wacky coordinate system. Now it's the wacky coordinate system. You need, you to, you need to coin these things. Yeah, well, Is there any other place, uh, I'm assuming uh, at uh, Ripple Training, we can get more of your Final Cut Pro tips you have it. and this tricks? Is, this is it, the Final Cut Pro core training. So you can get this up here and, and you know, learn about how to wrangle Final Cut to make it bend to your will. Because not you don't always have to do a round trip. You don't always have to use the rest of the apps because Final Cut has uh, not only compositing, but it also has some motion effects built into it yep, as well. Absolutely. Great. Well, I've been your host, Brian Gary, joined by Steve Martin. Thank you very much for coming. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.